Good afternoon again to ESC TV. It's my pleasure to welcome you together with Jean-Philippe Collet to discuss another important guideline that has been presented one year ago at the ESC Congress in Munich, and that is notably the ESC guidelines on cardiovascular uh, uh, disease during pregnancy. It's my pleasure to invite uh, Jolien Rose Hesseling, who has been one of the task force chairs uh, from uh, Rotterdam. And um, uh, Jolien, can you share with us the most important key messages that emerged out of uh, the cardiovascular disease in pregnancy uh, guideline? I think one of the key messages is that we now implement a heart team, a pregnancy heart team, so that all women with cardiac disease who are contemplating pregnancy and are at high risk are discussed first in this team. And it is not necessary to have this team in your own hospital. You can also have a distance um, center for pregnancy and cardiovascular disease that you can consult and um, discuss this patient on forehand. And again, during pregnancy, around 20 to 30 weeks, a plan is made for the delivery. So when and how the delivery should be done, how long the patient should be staying in the hospital, what medication is safe, what is not. And um, this is not only the cardiologist, but of course the obstetrician, internal medicine, maternal medicine doctors, anesthesiologists, and all others who are very important. This is one of the key messages. Another important thing is that we define better the very high risk patients who are not allowed to become pregnant or at least should be advised against pregnancy because some still do become pregnant. And that is especially patients with pulmonary hypertension. This is a very high risk group with at least 9% maternal mortality and these should be advised against pregnancy. And I think these are very important topics. Um, we also try to stress more that the mode of delivery should be in first choice a vaginal delivery. Many countries and many doctors use the cesarean section because they feel better for cardiac patients. But this is not true. So this is also very stressed in this uh, guideline. I think that you, you have been uh, solicited uh, very much to present these guidelines. And what is the feedback you have one year after? Uh, we have a lot of positive feedback. Many people are very happy with it, so this is very good. Um, well, for me, it was a surprise that I also presented this guideline in Norway, and that is said, because of the long distances, they have to implement the guidelines in their own system, which is a little bit different, of course, than from other countries. Um, but overall, it was very positive, very positive reactions, and we also proved that the first guideline ever published on pregnancy and cardiac disease, was published in 2011, had a major impact on maternal mortality. So it has a positive influence, especially in the developing countries. So hopefully the second guideline, which is more specific, um, brings us further. Implementation of the guidelines is a key ingredient uh, to improve practice, as you just uh, uh, outlined. Uh, what kind of measures do you take? Are there certain registries uh, that are implemented? Well, we have the Registry of Pregnancy and Cardiac Disease, the ROPAC, which is part of the EORP, the Observational Research Program of the ESC. And um, we just started a new ROPAC registry on mechanical valves, because this was one of the gaps in knowledge from our guidelines, that the mechanical valves, the women with a mechanical valve, are very high risk. Nobody knows how to treat them. They do want to become pregnant, but do we give them vitamin K antagonists? Do we give them low molecular weight heparin? How should we do this? Should it be done in hospital? This is really difficult, so we really want to do a, an in-detailed study. So this is a result of the, of the, pri of the guidelines. And, um, and also, I think that it's very important that we can better counsel our women so they know what is the risk in my condition. We have also the peripartum cardiomyopathy registry, and this is also a very difficult topic. Do we use bromocryptin in these women? Should we do lactation? Um, so there's still some very important gaps in knowledge. Also aortic dilatation is a very difficult topic and we do need more study there. Do, do you have feedback from the patients or the, 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 in this guide, from these guidelines? We have guidelines feedback or? from the patient organizations. They are very happy with the guidelines. 
and also because it is important that we identify high-risk patients, but also women who are at low risk. And in earlier years, many cardiologists were very reluctant to let them become pregnant. So many women were told not to become pregnant. And now we can say this is a low risk, you can become pregnant. So for instance, two weeks ago, I had this woman coming to me and showing her baby. And she was told for 20 years not to become pregnant. And with the new guidelines, I told her, it is good, you can have a safe pregnancy. And she did. So this is really fantastic. So thank you very much uh, for sharing the success of this uh, important guideline, which is difficult uh, to produce in view of uh, the evidence uh, that is more difficult Absolutely. to generate as compared to other areas in cardiovascular uh, medicine. And we thank you and the entire task force for thank these you. achievements. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good.